are we doing, Jim? Looking for customers. The Collector's Centre in Walthamstow was once a mecca for dealers and punters alike. Now online shopping, eBay and the lack of interest in collectibles has forced this market into decline. There is life in the Collector's Centre, not as you know it. Oh, you get some characters coming in, yeah. Most of them are half crazy anyway. <laughs> you don't get it, do you? This is sacred music. Stop. Yeah. I have been a collector since I was three. What did you collect when you were three years old? Records. George Formby. Duran Duran, uh, there was things like Dead or Alive weren't there and there, all that sort of thing. So when everyone was listening to that, what were you listening to? I was listening to Billy Cotton doing I've Got a Lovely Bunch of Coconuts. And um, in terms of, of terms of this world and this life, I'm the gaffer. It is an addiction. I call it my neurosis. But it's also very therapeutic because uh, when you go around looking for things, you're walking and I say, well, that's my exercise as well. It's better than having a shrink. <laughs> what was that? Dancing. Uh, the truth is going to come out eventually. And um, um, all I can say is I hope they look after me. You don't kick them out, you listen to them, and you can't judge a book by a couple of places. This is the Wood Street Market, welcome to Ghost Town. I will say this, collecting's insane. The reason people collect is, well the reason now people collect is because they term it as some kind of investment. I, I don't rest until I've found the last one. Whatever it might be. But then the game is finished then, so you never really want to find the last one. I'll very rarely pay a lot of money for something that is uh, an investment, quote unquote. What is it about collecting records that really appeals to you? I don't know. Just music and the touch, the feel, the smell, the, everything about it. It's just, just music. You either like music or you don't, and, uh, and that's it. The collection hovers between six and seven thousand. It's a lovely lot of gear I bought here. The collector's centre may be a bit quiet these days, but newcomers Jake and Simon have just opened Village Vinyl and are bringing some new energy to the market. A bit of a shock to the system. And that's just the uh, other uh, the other uh, shop owners. <laughs> Mainly sell um, sort of soul and jazz, funk and hip hop and stuff. We kind of sort of sell stuff that no one else sells in here because they. Um, no, they, they've been here a while, I guess, and we've tried to make a bit of a new edge to things. Dave Winpress, also known as Decker Dave, is a regular at the market. Dave has a photographic memory and can name the artist and song on any Decker record just by being given the catalogue number. So you, uh, you can do the numbers in a minute, Tiger? Yeah, give us the title, not give me the numbers. Yeah, okay, we'll get the book in a minute. <laughs> One, two, one, seven, nine. The Saxons. That's correct. Oh, the Saxons. Oh, yeah. With Dave, the first thing he does is look at the number, of course. Yeah. Not interested in the... Um, Artist or title. You're the Messiah, Dave. Yeah. Definitely. As my 13 year old daughter would say, respect. He's the most amazing man I've ever met. This is the first actual album I've ever seen of one of these sets. They done most of the films through the 30s and 40s that uh, Disney had brought out uh, the songs from in three record sets. But they normally came in playing HMV Slaves. There was a special children's series sleeve, but I've never seen them in an album before. So this is quite a rare piece. It's the difference between men and women. Women listen to music. Men collect it. Really common way of getting hold of the track is it is the B-side of Frankie Vaughan's version of The Garden of Eden. I'm a collector. 
and I have things for about a week and then I've got to sell them because I've got no money. <laughs> <laughs> That's about the strength of it really. Sometimes I try to hold on to them for two weeks, <laughs> but it doesn't usually happen, happen down here. He's a collector. Yeah, I'm a collector. I'm a trader. I'm a trader with nothing to sell and no money to buy anything with. Yeah. <laughs> Phil Goodman is a craftsman and collector and has been in the market for 14 years and has seen a steady decline in trade. I used to get people, dealers coming in, even if they didn't buy anything, used to come and have a chat, stay for half an hour, have a cup of tea. But that's, uh, that's finished now. It doesn't happen. They're all on the eBay. And it's very impersonal and um, it doesn't appeal to me. Yeah. And also, when a person brings in something to repair, it gives me uh, a bit of satisfaction knowing that I put something right which was, wasn't working or didn't look good, you know? There's a satisfaction in that. Records, valves, transformers, paintings, statues of cats, tyres. What else do I collect? Pens, I used to collect pens as a personal thing and I decided to deal in them as well. Vintage fountain pens, I repair them, buy them, sell them. And the same with lighters, I used to collect old cigarette lighters. Well, it's hard being a collector and a dealer at the same time. Down this market, you're never too far away from a Melvin sleeve. And uh, Melvin's a wonderful chap who comes in, he takes all our old battered sleeves and he repairs them for us. Bought some maps off of Alan next door, 1888, whole map of London. A book on Samuel Pepys, what I bought, Samuel Pepys, is it? And I'm reading that and I'm going everywhere where Samuel Pepys went 250 years ago, but I'm doing it now. Here we have a, a 1940s regal sleeve, which is painstakingly put an edge back on for us. Uh, this is another Melvin sleeve. He's uh, obviously found a plain 78 sleeve somewhere and Crossed it with a paper bag. Alan, or Captain Vinyl, is another veteran trader at the market and is an avid collector himself. I'll always be a collector. I just hope I won't always be a dealer. As I said earlier, I've got most of what I personally want. Um, last year I probably only bought from a new record shop um, less than half a dozen records. The point about this shop is it's badly run due to the fact that I'm too much of a collector. Any, any really good stuff that comes in this shop goes home. <laughs> Sweet Mary. 12015. That's, that's exactly right. 12015. <laughs> Unbelievable, Dave, I'll tell you. <laughs> I mean, 78s were always things that were, at the time when I was younger, were always things obviously wrapped up in plastic and hardly ever brought out, because they were quality 78s. Obviously, there were other 78s that you'd discover in charity shops and stuff, occasionally really good ones, but most of them not really the sort of thing I want to listen to, and also really, like, bro half broken or whatever. It's definitely true. There is an afterlife. Hmm. Hmm. I'm, I'm the only, I'm the only, I'm the only person on this planet who can prove it. Hmm. Local songwriter John Arthur often strolls through the market on a Saturday afternoon. This is almost like a, a sort of a, a cathedral to the past. And you've got this sort of central walkthrough with these little delightful little shops off on either side. But the sad thing, of course, is that it's all about the past. And people do tend to come here because they're thinking about the past, because they don't feel there's much of a future. I mean, young people, they don't go in to collect uh, antique things or old things. And it's becoming a, a plastic throwaway society, you know, to my opinion, anyway. We've got, you know, all our old school hip hop that we used to love when we grew up and stuff. And, but from that, we learned about all the other music, like jazz and soul and funk and what, whatever. So. A lot of people are always come in and sort of share those stories and bring their old records in and talk about it, so... Richard Butterworth is a real collector's collector 
a walking archive on anything connected to British rock. Uh, it's a couple of years ago, uh, the first two Pink Floyd albums, oh, what? vinyl, original releases, yeah. perfect condition, mono. Now, just out of interest, you as a guy who knows the trade, what would you reckon they'd be worth? Well, just better than, I would say, a, a one, wouldn't it? First album. First album, mono. 150, yeah. yeah. I ended up getting 250 apiece. You know, as as vinyl disappears in terms of like new releases and stuff like that, or it gets harder to sort of be able to do that in terms of being on a label or something like that, this stuff becomes even more important because it's all it's all about what came and what, what made music what it is now. I found one, it's called, uh, by a band called Caravan. Mm. How are you with them? You all right with them? Not bad, yeah. Now, they did a single in 1970, and it was titled called If I Could Do It Again, I'd Do It All Over You, which is quite famous, I think we all know it. Mm. Over to you. It was confident. 13063. Spot on. It's, 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 a, heavy it's, a metal la it's a mental label, isn't it? It is a mental label. It's, Me it's heavy. It's mental, isn't it? Heavy. It's no, mental, heavy. isn't it? Yeah, it mental. Is. Yeah, mm. that's what we're mm. Mental. Is that what you got with them? Yeah, it's mental. mental. Jeff Gibbs is a long-time trader at the market and has also seen a decline in trade. The youngsters are coming. They're, they, they're not interested in it at all. You know, they, they don't want to know. I say they're interested in what how their phone sounds. It's mm. got a good ringtone on it or something. Well, what's what you speak of market was, but now it's like a ghost town. It's only no one here. But who cares about money when you've got Decker Dave? Uh, it's good news week. Hedge up. Hedge Hoppers Anonymous. One double two four one. Yeah, that's correct. Jeez. Spot on. It's <laughs> 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 mind blowing. These are not common bands. No. We started making music or DJing. We didn't do it because we thought, right, we'll have a career and you know start making money. But you know, it's just because we love music. And this is a good way to sort of share that. Again, you share it DJing, you share it making music. Gets in your blood. You enjoy it. And you go to antique fairs. Usually meet three or four people that you know. You stop and have a chat, have a cup of tea, and um, there's a social side to it as well. I'm a Yankee Doodle Dandy. I'm a Yankee Doodle Dandy. Party dances with Sydney Thompson, including the classic "I Came, I Saw, I Congoed." We've got a bit more enthusiasm for it because we're still discovering things ourselves. So you know, that's that's the joy of it, just sharing that with other people. Jim has recently retired, but can't keep away from the market. I wouldn't be sitting here now. I didn't like it. I wouldn't. I don't have to be here, so I would. I would. I'd do it for pleasure. Here we are, Sunnywood Street reporting. As you can see, it's another busy day in the market. Oh, so sorry, there was a ghost. <laughs> he got buried under a pile of records in Tony and Jim's. <laughs> <laughs> You can edit. You can edit him out, can't you? Better cover, I gather from the revelation that my, 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 the root of my family is in the tribe of Judah. Hand tied you by the Beatles. Hey, what band? <laughs> I'm here for the wrestling match, mate. <laughs> <laughs> so in. I think the first thing about this place is it, it's a good laugh down here because of the other people. You know, it's, it's every shop has got a different character in it, whether it yeah. be, uh, you know, Mad Ray up the front or little Tony running around everywhere or Jim with his matching outfits or old Captain Vinyl and his fags or Jeff with his football programs or, you know, it, it's just, you couldn't ask for a bunch of people who are the, the, the bigger characters. Oh, this is Decker Dave and I'm back. Still trying to promote the new world religion through my discovery of the beast. A 
find a lot of things that people collect are attached to their memories. Whether it's is from an era where you had better days and you want to try and you know, go back to those days. I don't want to be the same as everyone else, that's why I'm a mod. I'm one EP short. A guy came in to me today asking me for a, a singing dogs record, which is a thing that Carl Wiseman put together in 1956. And it was literally... <clears throat> It was literally recordings of dogs barking, pitched at notes, and therefore he made a record out of it. And he's coming because he remembers it being played on the BBC when he was a child. And he's been looking for it for a long time, and he's coming to me to buy it off of me. So I'll sort out a copy of that for him for the weekend, and he'll be a happy bunny. But it's buying a childhood memory. I don't even know if he's got a record player to play it on. Don't look like the type of person that would. <laughs> Is it a particular era that you're interested in? No, everything from back to the old music hall days, Flory Ford, Mari Lloyd, right up to, well, I won't say up to the present because there's nothing at the present that interests me, but um, say up to the 50s, 60s, some of the 60s. What happened to all your Decker stuff? I sold it. I, I, I sold it. It got, too, it got too much for me to handle. Yeah, people are always trying to sell things. They always think they're worth more than what they are, but they do. Classic example, of course, is Rock Around the Clock. They come and say, oh, I've got Rock Around the Clock. You know, how much is it worth? And you tell them 50 pence and they fall through the floor, but that's all it's worth. Get people coming in, they want to sell this and they want to sell that, and quite frankly, most of it, you look at it and you just don't want it. I'm not an obsessive collector, I just sort of call in occasion to see what's, what's here, you know. It's like you get those, those programmes on the telly, the hundred best comedians or the hundred best films or whatever. There's a sense in, in our culture now of, of decline and I just don't think that people really think there is a future. And maybe they're right. <laughs> I am a prophet actually. I'm, a, I, I'm actually a prophet of the last times. Blimey. <laughs> What's the value of music ultimately? Because you're either into music or you're, n or you're into collecting for collecting's sake. Um, and I, I just, I mean, obviously, you gentlemen are in the trade, and it's what do you care? You, 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 you make a living out of. Yeah, but I suppose we, we commit the, the ultimate sin and all. We collect and all. So, yeah, yeah. You know, obviously, they always say you shouldn't collect and sell. Freezer Brewer, bit of 50s pop. Pick it up a little. Tony Kinsey doing Skiffle with Don Rendell on bass. On, what's he on on this? Uh, oh, tenor sax. Okay. I, 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 I spoke with several people in Enfield Town and they, no, they noticed the 666 bus and they were a bit perturbed about it. They were a bit anxious about it. They, they, they were worried what was going on. But um, I reassured them it's all to do with, with the King Edward pub and World in Lane. I think we we still get excited about music, which is I think one of the main things about the store is, you know, we'd still kind of bring records in that each of us haven't heard and play them to each other and play them to other people and, you know, we're kind of people our age, I think that you get that enthusiasm still, which is good and that's kind of what we're about really. It must be some sort of a transport system in heaven where, that, where, 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 where people live. Which 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 which, which he, he 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 has a, a strong interest in. The kids don't seem to be interested in music like what we were in those days. Anyway, more important. Don't you think? There's, there's so many other interests is. for. I mean, music was our life then. Me and Jeff often discuss it, didn't we? But I really like the sound that 78s make. The actual yeah. sound oh. volume is like up. Yeah, oh, when you compare them to like. Yeah. 45s and, and 33s or, or 10 mm. inch records. Yeah. They've just got this electricity yeah. about them. Yeah. But Absolutely. the only problem is they break really easily. Yeah. Do you think that the internet and eBay and so forth is thre going to threaten ultimately places like this? I mean, this is oh, it, it fantastic. Has. It has. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's destroyed us really. In fact, there's probably more space given over in the average HMV today to um, video games and um, DVDs yeah. than there is to... I mean, they've shredded the music department mm. in some of these places. It's incredible, yeah. isn't it?
Um, and it's getting harder and harder for obvious reasons. Um, there's a demand still for the type of stuff we sell, but unfortunately now there's too many ways of buying it. It's so easy for someone to put stock on the internet costs them next to nothing, where we have to pay our rent and so on. I've probably got more 78 customers than any other format because I specialise in it and know about it. But there are still people out there that want to, want to buy them, want to collect them, are collecting them. Is there a bus 666, Dave? Oh, what was the one that used to go to Renfield, why everyone's miserable? That was 66. Oh, 66, yeah, the stock number, yeah. Yeah, the bus, that's the, it. The registration number. 66, that's right. 66, you yeah. Know it's an unfortunate situation here. Um, we've probably got the least passing trade of anywhere in London. I mean, the outside street alone, there's many, many small shops that have closed down because they can't compete with the um, bigger stores. And uh, it's a shame because... Uh, the old man is uh, having to call it a day, pack it in, retire, or get a job. I think anybody who comes in here now has really, really got to spend money on advertising. You know, there's, there's people live around the corner here, you know, they don't know we're here. Do you think there's going to be a future for this place? Uh, not really. I don't think so. No future. I might go on for a few years, but when you, when you think hey, it used to, what it used to be here and what it is now is um, very different. Are you going to stay here? Though? No. You're not? No. You're moving out? Yeah. When? Next time, next time you come down with the camera, you'll be able to film another empty unit. 30-odd 78's there for my collection. Nice few CD box sets. They're the best sort of days you can have down here because you don't take any bleeding money. <laughs> well, what, you miss it? What, miss what? It's a proper ghost town, I like it used to be. Did you know about the, the pool on the hill? Hmm. It was written about you, wasn't it? Mm. I don't know how they found out. What about you? Yeah. But who was it, John or Paul? They found out about you to write Fall on the Hill then. Paul? Oh, it's Paul? Mm. The Bills is Marelda, the Bills. Don't be fighting this Marelda. Yeah, I like, I, like, I like to make you talk about old times and uh, and and the relevance of my life to, to the end of the world and all the rest of it, you know. Don't tell me, Mr. Christian, I'll come back and see... Well, what's my... I'll come back and see you at your porch, man! This is the Moody Blues. Mm. Now it's called Steal Your Heart Away. Oh. Is that side? Uh, it's an A-side, yeah. <laughs> yep, definitely not an A-side. It's a Decca, 1964. Steal Your Heart Away. Still like to lose your money. Double one nine seven one. Yeah. Yes. Hey, what are you rebelling against? What you got? <laughs> <laughs> I've done it in the year this film has got to my head, really. <laughs> Mark made a film about Wood Street, and this film, right, is going to be the best thing since Citizen Kane. That's the tip of the iceberg. I mean, you see how many records are in it. Oh my god. I'll come back with some cushions and see you in Portsmouth! Sorted. Cut. Finished.
Do you think people don't go to Windsor Market so much? I don't know what it is for. There's, there's, there's nothing to get for us, for sure.